Nick Nickham. Now we are going to go through a series of uh, electrocardiograms with rapid interpretation. Now here's an electrocardiogram with uh, some changes suggestive of uh, acute myocardial infarction. As you can see in lead V1, V2, V3 and V4 there is a significant ST elevation from the baseline. The T wave is lifted upwards and this is suggestive of a hyperacute phase of an acute anteroseptal myocardial infarction. When leads V1 to V4 are involved, it represents anteroseptal myocardial infarction and in cases this is related to occlusion of a proximal left anterior descending artery. There are tiny R waves which suggest that there has been no development of the Q waves at this present time. Incidentally, you can also see some minor ST depression in the inferior leads which are reciprocal changes seen with anterior myocardial infarction. Now here is another electrocardiogram and what is your diagnosis? This electrocardiogram reveals several interesting characteristics of a hyperacute myocardial infarction and you see ST elevation in lead 1, AVL, V2 to V6. So this involves the high anterior wall, the anteroseptal wall and the lateral wall. And this can occur when a left anterior descending artery has large diagonal branches and supplies uh, the lateral wall. When an artery of this caliber gets occluded in its proximal portion, the entire territory supplied by this uh, left anterior descending artery is going to undergo changes related to acute myocardial infarction and that's what we are seeing here with the ST elevation in 1 and ABL which represents a high anterior wall related to the proximal diagonal branches where the anteroseptal myocardial infarction involving V1 to V4 which represents the, the main septal branches and the diagonal branches then we have the lateral wall which is represented by V5 which is related to the distal diagonal branch so here we have what is known as extensive anterolateral myocardial infarction. This is involving a major part of the heart muscle. In addition, we see some ST depression of a considerable degree in the inferior leads which are reciprocal changes. In summary, this is a, an electrocardiogram representing extensive anterolateral myocardial infarction or simply extensive anterior myocardial infarction with reciprocal changes noted in the inferior leads. What is your diagnosis? This electrocardiogram is similar to the electrocardiogram we saw previously with a significant ST elevation and lifting of the T wave from the baseline but there is already development of Q waves in lead V1, V2, V3 and small degree in V4. So we have a recent anteroseptal myocardial infarction and in addition to that there's also ST elevation in the leads 1 and AVL which suggests high anterior infarction. So we have a, an electrocardiogram which suggests a high anterior and anteroseptal myocardial infarction which is of recent duration probably more than 6 hours and along with that we see horizontal ST depression in leads 2, 3 and AVF which are reciprocal changes related to the anterior wall myocardial infarction. In addition, if you look at the PR interval is prolonged suggesting first degree AV block which is seen in this particular tracing. Now let's move on to another electrocardiogram. And here is an electrocardiogram which suggests a minor ST elevation in 2, 3 and AVF. In order to diagnose acute myocardial infarction, we have to have 1 millimeter or greater ST elevation in 2 or 3 leads representing a particular region of the myocardium such as the anterior wall, the inferior wall, the lateral wall. Or the high anterior wall. So here we have a situation where there are hyperacute changes uh, as signified by mild ST elevation and uplifting of the T wave and this is highly suggestive of an acute uh, hyperacute inferior myocardial infarction. What is your diagnosis? The most significant finding in this electrocardiogram is a varying RR interval which may be related to sinus arrhythmia or the presence of a premature atrial beat. And in addition, there is an incomplete right bundle branch block 
uh, by the presence of uh, R, S or prime noted in V1 and V2. The, the negative deflection of the atrial uh, depolarization is covering more than one box which may suggest left atrial enlargement. The more subtle findings in this electrocardiogram are flat T waves. These changes seen in multiple leads, the inferior leads, the anterior leads and the lateral leads and these changes are known as non-specific T wave changes. They do not clearly represent myocardial ischemia itself, but however, they are not normal. These changes could be related to a number of conditions such as ischemia, electrolyte imbalance, hypoxia or anemia among many other conditions. The non-specific STT changes do not signify a, a direct acute event. However, if the patient has symptoms, then further cardiac evaluation would be warranted. Similarly, we see another electrocardiogram here where we have a T wave inversion in lead 1 and AVL uh, along with the flattening of the T waves. Again, the T wave inversion is not uh, as significant as we would like to see in patients uh, who have significant ventricular ischemia where the T waves are deep and symmetrically inverted. So again, these are non-specific STT changes because uh, the ST segment also vary from lead to lead. So this is an example of a non-specific STT change. There's no evidence of any acute or hyperacute myocardial infarction changes noted in this electrocardiogram. This is another example of a patient with flat T waves throughout the electrocardiogram and this is suggestive of non-specific T wave change. This is an electrocardiogram from a lady who presented with chest pain. At the first glance, you notice that the ST segments are straight and the T waves are slightly lifted and there is ST segment elevation in lead 1, lead 2, lead 3, AVF and the lateral chest leads. When we see ST elevation in multiple leads, there are certain things we need to consider, among which are early repolarization, diffuse pericarditis. This lady incidentally had normal coronary arteries and this was most likely <clears throat> a normal variation for this 49 year old lady. If you see diffuse ST elevation, especially with the convexity facing downwards, unlike in an acute ischemic event where the convexity appears upwards, we need to keep in mind that it could be a sign of early repolarization. It could relate to pericarditis or even myocarditis. What is your diagnosis? Here is an electrocardiogram which shows sinus rhythm. Uh, there is left axis deviation by negative deflections noted in lead 2, 3 and AVF. The important findings in this electrocardiogram are the presence of Q waves which cover more than 40 millisecond duration in lead AVF and also in lead 3 which suggests an old inferior myocardial infarction. I say this is an old inferior myocardial infarction because the ST segments are almost to the baseline and the T waves are flat or more or less upright and sometimes there could be regeneration of the R wave in a small percentage of patients uh, after the myocardial infarction has been established for several months. So here we have a case of chronic or an old inferior myocardial infarction. And another interesting finding that we find in the chest lead is the presence of an incomplete right bundle branch block as evidenced by a R S R prime uh, feature in V1. The next point I would like to bring to your attention is the lack of progression of the R wave in the anterior leads. Uh, generally, we would like to see a more positive deflection in V1 and by V3, the positive deflection should be much more than the negative deflection. However, poor R wave progression across the anterior leads uh, brings up an important topic of uh, the differential diagnosis where we see a poor R wave progression. We can see poor R wave progression in patients with uh, anterior myocardial infarction, in patients with left bundle branch block, patients with uh, WPW or Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, 
patients with a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, patients with pericardial effusion, and also in obese patients. Another condition that can give rise to poor airway progression is when the chest leads are placed high up uh, in the second space or the third space uh, which can produce negative deflection in the anterior leads giving the suggestion of a loss of airways anteriorly. So anytime you see a poor progression of the airways, uh, all these differential diagnoses have to be taken into consideration to determine whether the poor airway progression is related to a pathological condition or is it a, a situation that is more technical in terms of lead placement and others. Now we move into a different arena of myocardial ischemia which is characterized by ST depression in multiple leads. Here we see ST depression in lead 2, lead 3, ABF and also the lateral chest leads. If you also notice, here's an electrocardiogram with uh, atrial fibrillation as the underlying rhythm with the rapid ventricular response at a rate of 150 beats per minute. So this is a patient with the atrial fibrillation with the rapid ventricular response and STT changes noted in the infralateral leads. This is suggestive of a subendocardial ischemia. While we are on the subject of a subendocardial ischemia, I want to point out an important aspect that there is no difference between subendocardial ischemia or infarction with the exception of cardiac enzymes. If you see ST depression and T-wave inversion which is suggestive of subendocardial ischemia and if the patient has positive cardiac enzymes, it is considered subendocardial infarction or a non-Q-wave myocardial infarction. So these changes are significant. However, since these changes are occurring with a rapid ventricular response in a atrial fibrillation, it is not clear whether this is a suggestive of a subendocardial ischemia or whether this is rate related. In either case, uh, by slowing the heart rate, if these STT changes revert back to normal, then it, it may be an indication that it was rate related and it needs further evaluation. Also, there is evidence of low voltage in the limb leads and also chest leads. Here, basically, we have a, a, an electrocardiogram with a sinus rhythm with varying baseline. The ST segments are normal. There is an incomplete right bundle branch block. The ST segments are normal. So the only major abnormality we see is uh, the presence of uh, right bundle branch block. We can diagnose anterior myocardial infarction in the presence of uh, right bundle branch block since the right bundle does not affect the first 40 milliseconds of the electrical activation of the left ventricle and it is evident in this case where we have a Q wave in V1 and V2 which suggests uh, an anterior myocardial infarction uh, with the development of an incomplete right bundle branch block. So we can indeed diagnose anterior myocardial infarction in the presence of a right bundle branch block. However, the development of a myocardial infarction may be difficult to diagnose in the presence of a left bundle branch block. This program is continued in the next part. Thank you.